What is going on, everybody? It's C4 here. I'm trying to get rid of it's your boy. I hate the way that fucking sounds. It's just a bad habit. It's C4 here, and today we are doing the newest episode of Madden Greats. And as you can tell by the thumbnail and the title, we are on the Philadelphia Eagles. The reception that we got from the Cleveland Browns ones was awesome, man. We're, by the time this video came up, it probably will be close to 10,000 views. I asked for four, 300 likes, I think it was 300 likes. And we're at, we got like 900, something crazy like that. So I think the, the, it's motivation for me to do this and prior, not necessarily prioritize because all the videos, all the regular content, the connected franchise modes, the rebuilds, um, you know, Eagles content, draft content, it's all going to stay the same. But if I can hit 400 likes on this video, I will get right working on the next one. So that's going to be the mandatory, the minimum mandatory for me to prioritize uh, making more of these Madden great series is 400 likes on the video so that's how i know you guys are really feeling it so hopefully we can hit that for this video for the lovely philadelphia eagles let's jump right into the roster usually i have like notes and stuff open i think we can pretty much do most of this here by memories this is philadelphia eagles, man this is a team i have grown up with. so the, what we're doing in this series is we look back at every madden overall from madden 2002 i think was the first game on this website that i was using all the way up to Madden 17, we take the highest overall players and put them onto one roster. And the Philadelphia Eagles, so it's 02. I started playing Madden. I think 03 was my very first Madden game because before that I just played the Blitz. I wasn't really super into football. Uh, but the Blitz games are always fun on the old N64 and PlayStation and stuff like that. So, um, realistically, anyone from the 02 roster, I don't think there's actually any players from the 02. Oh, there's one. One guy from the O2 roster, I think, that ended up making this. Um, so most of these guys I played with, and I played with a lot. Uh, so first, we're going to jump in at the quarterback position, and we have Donovan McNabb, who in Madden 2006, where he was the cover athlete, he got a 97 overall. There's a couple years where he got 95, but Madden 06 was his big year. Everyone knows Donovan McNabb. Most Philadelphia Eagle fans have a love-hate relationship with the guy um, he was Offensive Player of the Year in 24, er, 2004. He got his number retired by the Eagles, has multiple Philadelphia Eagle passing records, was just shy of 250 passing touchdowns and like 40,000 passing yards. So I think, uh, you know, we, we have a great guy here in Carson Wentz, I think, that may be able to have the longevity and challenge some of the, the team records that Don McNabb has. But, I mean, aside from all the crushing, heartbreaking playoff defeats that we had during the Donovan McNabb era, um, I can lick my wounds because I never really got to see the other, you know, quote unquote greatest quarterback in Randall Cunningham. I wasn't, I wasn't even fucking alive when he was playing. Uh, so McNabb, uh, even, even, I'd say maybe like if you go by a year by year basis, I think the most explosive quarterback we've had was Michael Vick in 2010. But you, you have to say Don McNabb is the best uh, quarterback the Philadelphia Eagles have ever had from a statistic standpoint and from a definitely from a success standpoint. Uh, so that's why we have old Don McNabb there at the quarterback spot. Uh, looking at the running backs, we got Shady, 97 overall. He had that 97 overall in Madden 15 after he had an absolutely outstanding season. He had over 2,000 all-purpose yards, uh, I think like 17 touchdowns or something crazy like that. So there was a point in time when Shady was an absolute beast for the Philadelphia Eagles before he kind of had a, I don't really know if it was a, necessarily you could call it a falling out with Chip Kelly. Before Chip Kelly traded away all our good players, uh, Shady was a baller. I think, I personally think, I mean, running backs... It definitely is a position that we could look at upgrading this year's current draft class. But I think, you know, deviating the money. If, like, if we didn't go through the DeMarco Murray experiment and we just got rid of Shady, I, I kind of understood it just from the fact that, I mean, while he's been good at Buffalo, has he been as good as his contract states? I think that's somewhat debatable. I mean, he's been a phenomenal running back. And I think in retrospect, I would have much preferred to have Shady here. But he is a high-paid running back, and he is getting up to that 30 where it's like, uh, I don't know, man. Like he, He's been banged up. He's missed some games for injury for the Buffalo Bills. I mean, that's why they've had Michael Lilsley to get involved with the offense uh, quite a bit. But Shady, it's, it's on the line. It's on the line of, if is he playing... Um, is he playing up to his contract level? Yes, when he's on the field, but the injuries are starting to pile up uh, for a guy like him. So, I mean, I think overall I would much rather him be on the Eagles, but it's one that I can somewhat justify uh, in terms of his cap hit. 
Uh, and then we also have Brian Westbrook, who was for, he was a 97 overall because of the scheme changes, which you're going to see throughout this video. Uh, the base roster will be the, the overalls that I tell you here, but everyone knows when you hop into a career mode uh, and get the schemes going, some players' overalls and ratings will fluctuate a bit. Uh, but in Madden 2009, Brian Westbrook had a 97 overall. He unfortunately goes down to a 95, but this is going to be a great one-two punch. Brian Westbrook, one of the best receiving backs in the history of the NFL. I can't remember what year it was. He had one year. That was absolutely insane. It's, I think it might have been 2007. Uh, was it 07? 2007, 2006. One of those years. He had like 2,100 receive, or 2,100 total yards. Absolute monster. So both these guys are all-purpose backs uh, that hopefully we can utilize. And we also kept Darren Sproles on the roster for his special team abilities. Uh, for fullback, we brought in Leonard Weaver, who in Madden 11 had a 90 overall. Everyone remembers Leonard Weaver. I don't actually think that. Uh, oh Jesus, whatever. We'll be able. To, we're not gonna use the fullback anyways. I don't. We just put it in here because I remember Leonard Weaver was actually one of the few times that we've had like a weapon. He was. He was just classified as a weapon, even though he played fullback, kind of like a Marcel Reese, just a little before Marcel Reese's time with the Oakland Raiders. Uh, obviously, I think he's. But he's probably like six feet, like two forty. Uh, but Weaver, man, he was. He, I like Weaver. He was good. He. I think we only had him for two years or so. Uh, but he was always man. He was solid for like five, six touchdowns a, uh, a year. And was a mismatch nightmare. Uh, jumping to the wide receivers, Terrell Owens, T.O., and Madden, 2006, 98 overall. Jumps up to a 99 uh, here. The, the only good wide receiver the Philadelphia Eagles have ever had uh, since I've been a fan. We only had him for one year. He was absolutely incredible. Um, I know a lot of people, including myself during that time, were incredibly salty with the way that T.O. handled himself with the whole off-field issues and stuff like that. But you could debatably say one of his best seasons, I'd say it's probably... You know, his top three seasons that he had in a very long career was with the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, one of the times he made All-Pro, uh, he had 1,200 yards and 14 receiving touchdowns. But more so, the fact that, you know, his toughness. He had a goddamn, like, broken fucking leg or, what, a torn ACL or something crazy like that and still suited up to play in the Super Bowl against the New England Patriots and was our best wide receiver by an absolute mile. Um, so I think that um, now that, that the wounds have sealed, uh, it's very similar to Donovan McNabb. Where Donovan McNabb, it's kind of painful to think about his history with the Philadelphia Eagles. But when it's all said and done, especially at the quarter at the wide receiver position where we've been incredibly weak, uh, T.O. is the is probably the most talented wide receiver the Philadelphia Eagles have ever had. And yes, that's including you know Harold Carmichael, even Deshaun Jackson, who we're gonna talk about in a second. Harold Carmichael, Deshaun Jackson, Tommy McDonald. Uh, Mike Quick, uh, I'm trying to think, I'm probably actually missing some, someone really, really popular up there, but T.O., for my money, will be the greatest wide receiver the Eagles have ever had. Uh, then we have Deshaun Jackson here, who in Madden 2011 had a 91 overall, he only went down to a 90 in the scheme, but I remember he had the 99 speed, and he was absolute glitch when you put him on the streak, so hopefully we can get that going. And then, I was, this is somewhat surprised. I thought Jordan Matthews would have got a better rating uh, than 83, but 83 is just about as high as he's ever gone. It's Kevin Curtis, White Lightning himself, in Madden 09, had an 87 overall. Absolute burn was a very underrated wide receiving threat. At time, I think there was like a one, two year period where Kevin Curtis was our best wide receiver. I remember for a while, he was like uh, the fastest player in the NFL. He ran a really, really good 40 time. I think he broke the 40 yard dash record. I don't think it was at the combine, might have been on his pro day. But uh, he was incredibly hyped coming into the NFL. So we have two speedsters and T.O. Uh, hopefully take off the defense. Unfortunately, we kept Nelson Aguilar on the roster. Hey, gross. Uh, jump to the tight end position. Zach Ertz, currently, this is his current rating. Jumps up to a 90 in the scheme. I think he's an 88 overall, though, uh, on the base rosters. But the highest overall tight end the Philadelphia Eagles had tie was in Madden 11 with Brent Selleck with an 88. Mr. Reliable Brent Selleck actually bumps up to a 90 in this scheme. Um, you know, the longest tenured, I think, Philadelphia Eagle, him and John Dornboss, uh, great player, I think, well, maybe not great player, but he's been a consistently good player, uh, usually can get one or two highlight reel catches out of him a season, super reliable, and in the last couple years since we've drafted Zach Ertz and had him there, Brad Selleck has really developed himself into one of the better run-blocking tight ends in the NFL, uh, so he's still a good asset for the Philadelphia Eagles to have, and that's why I think they re-signed him, uh, in the last offseason. Uh, jumping to left tackle, we have Jason Peters. Who in? This is actually pretty dumb. Let me let me fix this because I maybe just skipped over this. Because Jason Peters in Madden 13 had a 96 overall rating, and yeah, this supposed to get fucked up. Oh, it definitely maybe not. It just 
Cause he's... Come on, give me that 96, baby. 93. What the fuck is this? Jason Peters in Madden 13 had a 96 overall. I might as well talk about the other guy in competition was Trey Thomas, who in Madden 2004 had a 95 overall. But I don't know what the fuck's going on, Jason Peters here. Give you 99, 99. It's just like a scheme fit. Like Jesus Christ, how much more can you give this guy? Get his rating up there to a 96. Fuck it, we'll stay at 95. Um, so yeah, Jason Peters, you know that big, uh, big free agency signing. From, oh, this wasn't a free agent signing. We traded with the Buffalo Bills uh, to get him. And he's been, you know, right now I'd say on the current Philadelphia Eagles roster, he's probably the only guy that has a shot at making the Hall of Fame. Uh, left guard, we have from Madden 2000. Yeah, it must have been just a fucked up rating because this one here, another one. In Madden 25, so that would have been, what year was that, 2014? In the Madden 25 edition, Evan Mathis was a 98 overall. In this scheme, he's down to a 95. So I guess whatever offensive line scheme or run blocking or pass blocking scheme that Doug Peterson has is fucking butchering our offensive line. But Evan Mathis has a 98 overall. He's one of the best. I was so pissed off when we got rid of Evan Mathis. I, you know, for the, some of you guys that have been with me for quite some time, and you would have seen me on Twitter. I was livid when we got rid of Evan Mathis. I mean, people were worrying about Deshaun Jackson, Jerry Macklin, still salty about the Sean McCoy thing. Evan Mathis was almost my biggest worry because we had absolutely no one to cover for him. And uh, we, we're, still, we're still struggling at that left guard spot uh, to find his replacement. Uh, at the center's position, we have Jamal Jackson, who in Madden 09 had a 92 overall rating. Oh, again! The fucking the ratings are taking a huge dip right now. This is unfortunate. Uh, we also kept Jason Kelsey who had an 85 rating, I think, in Madden 25 as well. Uh, back when Chip Kelly's offensive line was absolutely on point. But uh, Jamal Jackson was solid back in the Donovan McNabb era. Uh, right guard, we got Sean Andrews, Mr. Crazy himself, uh, who in Madden 08 had a 96 overall. So not too bad of a dip in overall for him. Uh, phenomenal player. I remember, let's see what we got here. I actually tabbed his, his little thing up here on the computer. Uh, let's see if we can get his pro football reference. Because he was, okay, so what we had is in... Uh, basically, he played four years with the Eagles, made the Pro Bowl twice, was the first team All-Pro. Uh, beast, man. Or he played basically three years with the Eagles. And in his three years, he was a two-time Pro Bowl, a one-time All-Pro. Then he got injured, and he became kind of fucking paranoid and, and mental issues and stuff like that, which is incredibly unfortunate because he could have been uh, one of the greatest offensive linemen in the history of the Philadelphia Eagles, I think. Uh, but still get the juicy 95 overall rating. And then at right tackle, we have the only player from Madden 2002. And that is John Running, who in 2002 had a 93 overall. And his ratings stay there nice. Big old mauler. I mean, listening to the stories about my, him and Michael Strahan having battles every time the Philadelphia Eagles play the New York Giants. It's a thing of beauty. We also have Lane Johnson there, who is debatably the top right tackle in the NFL today. Jump the defensive side of the ball at the left defensive end spot. The greatest left defensive end is actually currently on the Eagles. It was a tie, but I decided just to give him the benefit of the doubt because I wasn't a fan uh, of Javon Kirst, who in Madden 05 had a 94 overall. Uh, Brandon Graham, though, in this year's game has a 94 overall. I don't know why he jumps down to a 93 with the scheme fit. Jeez, I think Doug Pierce's schemes are horrible. Everyone's taking a dip in overall ratings here. Uh, but Brandon Graham, you know, maybe not doesn't get the end sacks, the big time stats like that. But Pro Football Focus loves sucking his dick. I think he came number nine overall in players in Pro Football Focus's top 100 this year. Um, so fuck, I, you know, as Eagle fan, I sure as hell would like him to start getting that end game, that end product. But uh, as long as he keeps, you know, getting pressure, it's he's definitely uh, welcome on my teams. At right defensive end, we got Trent Cole, the hunter himself. Who in Madden 2011 had a 95 overall and likes to see that stay there. Trent Cole, one of my favorite players. I Actually, he's the only player I think I have two jerseys of. I have a white and a green Trent Cole jersey. Uh, he, was probably, he was my favorite player for quite some time with the Philadelphia Eagles. And um, it was it kind of sucked to see him go. But he's he's been actually decent, I guess, for the Indianapolis Colts. Maybe Colts fans can elaborate and say he's actually been shit or something like that. But when he was at the Eagles, he was incredibly underrated every year. Very similar career path in terms of respect around the league as Fletcher Cox. Took him a couple good years of actually being very, very good for people around the league to take notice and really recognize real for Trent Cole. Uh, defensive tackle spot, we have Fletcher Cox currently with the 94 overall. Uh, it bumps up for a scheme fit because I think his base overall rating here in Madden 17 was a 93. And to pair that with Corey Simon, who in Madden 04 had a 95 overall, taking a dip down here to a 94. But that is going to be a very terrifying interior of the defensive line. 
Uh, left outside linebacker, he was actually the only surprise that I had. I thought there would have been a better outside linebacker in his time, but the highest left outside linebacker the Philadelphia Eagles have had in Madden history is Connor Barrowin in 2016, who had an 87 overall. Jumps up to an 88 here in the scheme. We're now playing a 4-3, so I hope he's not going to be too much of a liability in that scheme. Uh, but he's always been athletic enough. I think Connor Barrowin... Uh, even though it looks like his time here with the Philadelphia Eagles may be coming to an end. He was incredibly flexible. I think he could play 4-3 outside linebacker, 3-4 outside linebacker, 4-3 defensive end. Uh, different varies of, of levels of success and talent at each one of those positions. But I think he's good enough to actually start in the NFL at all those positions. We actually have Bradham here who had a phenomenal year for the Philadelphia Eagles in 2016. And I actually said that was a great signing when they signed him in free agency. He was kind of like under the under the radar, you know, thrown in the mix with like a Leos McKelvin for this just like all oh, former players at the uh, – from the bills that Jim Schwartz brought over, and more people were still, even when we signed, like, we're Stephen Tulk, we're Stephen Tulk. I was like, no, Bradham's going to be sick, man. And look, he ended up being one of our best players and probably giving Michael Kendricks out of the Philadelphia Eagles, making him somewhat expendable. Uh, for the middle linebacker, the top one that we've had, uh, it sucks that Jordan Hicks probably won't play a whole lot because Jordan Hicks is a beast and maybe my favorite player on the Eagles right now, was Jeremiah Trotter in Madden 07, had a 93 overall, and luckily his rating stayed there. The Axe Man himself. Um, you know, probably the second most popular defender in my era of watching the Eagles. Obviously, number one's going to be Brian Dawkins. Uh, Axeman, you know, incredibly entertaining, big hitter, great playmaker, great longevity. He played, I remember like he retired one year. Okay, I think it would have been, he retired in 2008, and then we brought him back for a couple games in 2009. He was still solid, still a big time hitter. It was a beast for us. Uh, right outside linebacker, we got Takeo Spikes, who was only with the Philadelphia Eagles, I think, for a season or two. Uh, yeah, only one year in 2007. The one year is in Philadelphia. They gave him a very nice, in Madden, 2008, 92 overall when he came over from the Buffalo Bills. Um, we'll take it. Scale Spikes, the most freakishy looking neck. Him and Paul Pazlesny have the most, the craziest traps I've ever seen in the NFL. Uh, but Spikes was always really solid, even though he bounced around from a bunch of teams in the middle part of his career. Uh, and looking at the secondary, something that the Philadelphia Eagles haven't had very good, the secondary players, very similar to the wide receivers. We have just struggled getting talent there. Uh, the top overall wide receiver is Asante Samuel, who in Madden 09 had a 96 overall, jumping up to a 97 here in this scheme fit. Um, and by Asante Samuel, I mean Lito Shepard. Sorry, I messed it up. Lito Shepard, who in Madden 2008 had a 95 overall, and he's jumping up to a 97 here. Asante Samuel in Madden 09 had a 96, and he's going to an 85. We have small corners, so both these guys here at 5'10". Luckily, we have Troy Vincent, who in Madden 2004 had a 93 overall. Um, so, I mean, that's a decent size. We'll probably, we'll put Vincent in one of the starting outside spots and move, I, maybe Asante into the nickel. Not exactly sure. Honorable mention was Bobby Taylor, who also in Madden 2004 had a 93 overall rating. Coming to the free safety, obviously it's got to be Weapon X, Brian Dawkins, who in, I think he's actually a multiple year, uh, 99 overall. I think he was a 99 overall in 04 and 05. He's a beast. He's, he's one of the most popular Madden players, I think, in history. If you're making the top 10 most popular players in Madden history, Brian Dawkins would most certainly make that list along the likes of like Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, Brian Urlacher, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Um, so it's going to be fun uh, seeing what kind of stats he can put up for us. And then at strong safety, we have Malcolm Jenkins, who last year in Madden 16 had a 93 overall rating uh, after an outstanding, outstanding season. I think this was his rating, though, when the season ended. It wasn't like the opening day Madden rosters. It was the updated final day when he was a you know all-pro, pro bowler. He, he, you know, he, everyone sees his stats this year, and they say they declined a little bit. But I think that was because we asked him to play a little bit more nickel. He played a lot more. He basically was the jack-of-all-trades back there because of our weak-ass secondary play. Uh, so, uh, you know, people that say, oh, man, Malcolm Jenkins is regressing. I think he's just fine. And if we can get some uh, better playmakers at the cornerback spot, he should get back to that all-pro level. Uh, kicker, we have David Akers, who in Madden... What year is this? Madden 2006 got the perfect 99 overall rating, which is nice for David Akers, even though uh, absolutely shit the bed in the Super Bowl against the New England Patriots. And at punter, we have Donnie Jones, who in Madden 25 had a 91 overall, uh, down to a 90 in this scheme. So, overall, this is a very strong team. I think on paper, probably just, well, on paper, definitely a little bit more stronger than the Cleveland Browns we saw in Episode 1. Um, I'd say it's probably on par. Definitely a better offense, maybe a slightly worse defense than the Baltimore Ravens. But for the most part, this is going to be a very strong roster. So what we are going to do is sim to Week 16, and then we will play the last two games, and hopefully that works out for us. And then we can go in the playoffs, and then we'll play the play the moments throughout the playoffs, and that will be the gameplay. People have asked, you know, why don't you play uh, more games during this? I don't want to keep you guys past. 
you know, an hour. An hour is the money zone for this. If I was doing this as a live stream, I'd be a little bit less worried about the time frame. But this is just more so... Not, it's like I said, I, I, I think I always talk about this in every video. It's not to make it like, oh, i got to rush through it so it's over under an hour. It's more so anything over an hour it becomes incredibly time-consuming and limits my ability to do other types of things on the channel. So, uh, I mean, you're getting a good taste. You get to see the rosters. You get to see the stats. You get some gameplay. And then for the most part, once I'm done all these series and I release the roster uh, for download, then you guys can actually get your hands on this and do that. The only problem with that, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do it. Um, cause it's not like I have the, the completed roster on me right now. You know, it's, um, I do it by like every time you see a video, roughly like a day or two before that, uh, I just actually create the roster. So right now this is episode three, I believe this would be the third episode of this. We've done the Browns, we did the Ravens and they had the Eagles. So this is episode three, I've done three of these rosters up to this point. So it's not like I can release the full fucking kitten caboodle. That's a saying, right? To everyone. But the issue is, the, the rate that I'm going this with this series, on top of the other content, when I release these rosters, you know, it might be like fucking June, you know, April, May, June, something like that, so it's kind of at the end of the Madden cycle, but um, I don't know, I'll have to figure that out, maybe I'll have a little bit more time that I can, you know, make, batch make, you know, four or five rosters at a time or something like that, I just don't exactly, I can't guarantee, can't commit to something like that right now. Um, but I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Like I said, 400 likes, it seems pretty easy. We've got it back-to-back -back videos. So, um, try to shoot for that here. In this one, help this video. I don't know what likes exactly do, but I don't know if it helps the videos get more exposure. But that would be crazy. Because like I said, ideally, we can get the 400 likes and get into the 10K plus views for every single one of these videos. Very similar to my rebuilds. My rebuilds right now get like a minimum of 20,000 views, which is pretty crazy. I think for the season one rebuilds, we're very close. I think we did 19 episodes to getting a million total views for that. So that is really, really good. And thank you guys for all of that. I'll pat myself on the back for uh, taking a segment of Madden content and personally improving it, in my opinion. I think there's a reason why. I kind of came in late, like... This is not a shot at anyone. Every time it thinks, like, because there's, like, four or five people that are decently sized, like me, that do rebuilds. And every time I talk about it, people think I'm doing a shot. But all I have to say is that the proof's in the pudding. The way that I did it, I think I, right now, my Lamar Jackson Miami Dolphins rebuild is the most viewed rebuild in Madden right now. Or at least, I don't know if it's all time for Madden rebuilds, but it's definitely the most popular rebuild in this year's Madden. So what I was doing, I struck gold, and you guys seem to enjoy it. And uh, thank you guys for that. I'm not going to come out here and be like, oh, yeah, it was all me. It's all you guys. If you guys just thought of some other thing, it, the video could have just got like five, 6,000 views, and that was it. But um, thank you all for that. And I hope next year in Madden 18, I can have another big boom period and do some cool videos like that with some new prospects. But right now, before we, we talk into this, that's on the rebuilds. That's my only worry right now because rebuilds, are, they're fun. Don't get me wrong. They're really fun. But because I'm doing so many teams, I don't want to get burnt out because like at the pace that I'm doing it right now, they could very well, especially because a lot of you guys want to see me do um, revisions, like take over teams that I didn't necessarily win the Super Bowl with. There's a couple teams I didn't even fucking make the playoffs with that I I think I might do that for sure. But I don't want the rebuilds to run right up to Madden 18, and then it feels like I'm just doing it all over again because then it doesn't feel different, doesn't feel unique, doesn't feel special to me. Um, so ideally, Madden comes out at the end of August. At the very latest... I don't want to have any rebuilds for Madden 17 going into August. I want to, like, maybe August for my month off and work on other stuff. Um, but ideally, just for my sake, if we could hit the summer, July, if I could have July and August, no more rebuilds, that would be fucking good for my, my mental health and help me bring more exciting rebuilds for the Madden 18 season. But now we're back here with the Philadelphia Eagles here. God, this is nostalgia. I feel like, you know... I mean, it kind of sucks that it's a snow game, but this feels like my favorite football game, which it may seem like um, where, I, where I'm trying my best. I don't even know if, if it even counts for anything. I'm trying my best to get in EA's good graces so that maybe they'll give me some perks for the upcoming Madden 18 game. But my favorite football game to this point is Madden 2K5, uh, the one that had T.O. on the cover. And uh, this feels just like that. Most of these guys were on that roster. And no, I'm not most, but... Well, technically, I guess most of the guys on the defensive side of the ball were on the roster. We got T.O. 
Uh, Donovan McNabb and Brian Westbrook. I think Selleck might have had a chance to be on that roster. He wasn't really good. He was just a young little puppet of Cincinnati. But man, throwing up. All those games in that era were so good to be an Eagles fan. Like, Street, NFL Street 2, throw it up. McNabb, fucking T.O., game over. GG. All right, see if we can find T.O. here. Boom. What's your guys' thoughts on T.O.? I mean, those are pretty big news, pretty big ways about T.O. getting shunned for the Hall of Fame. I think that's a joke. Like, even if I was still pissed off at T.O. for what happened at the end of his career in Philadelphia, he's he's statistically and debatably the third best wide receiver that's ever played the game. And the fact that wait, he, was a, he could have been a first ballot Hall of Famer, and he should have been last year, got snubbed. And then this year, for his second time, he got snubbed. That's a fucking joke. I don't know what prejudices people are holding over him. He was never really that bad off the field. He's a locker room cancer, but it wasn't like he beat women. He wasn't like he was a drug act or anything crazy like that. Oh, that was bad. So I don't know. I think that's bullshit. But let me know what you guys think about the whole T.O. in the Hall of Fame. I think he deserves to be a Hall of Famer for sure. Like no doubt. Like he's gonna make it next year. There's been enough stink, I think, raised on social media and stuff uh, that he will make it this year or next year. Sorry. And all I know is that it'd be kind of cool, kind of nostalgic to see T.O. And Weapon X get uh, put in at the same time because they were big influences on my football fandom at an early age. All right, we're just failing to run the ball here. It is shady. Oh, no. Oh, Nelson Aguilar, baby. We don't discriminate. Anyone can get it, but of course it's going to be called back. It's too good to be true. I had to give old Aguilar here a touchdown. Looks like a holding on 78. I think that's Jamal Jackson, the center. Oh, Sean Andrews. Big old buy from Arkansas. But speaking of the defense, and this year's draft where everyone's saying that we need to go corner. Last first round corner we took was a decent one. Lito Shepard, who I think probably would make... You made it a Philadelphia Eagles dream team of all time. He'd probably make like depth on the cornerback depth chart. He was really solid with the Eagles. Him and Sheldon Brown. Right. Scramble. Ah. Oh. Fucking hole and pelly man. How do you know what our record is right now? I think we're eleven and two. Jordan Matthews. All, right, all our freaking freaking depth guys are out here. Let's hit Zach Ertz. Gets absolutely popped by, I think that's Landon Collins. And we'll bring out David Akers here for the field goal. Shot ourselves in the foot. That should have been seven. Boom. But you know, I think like the week, the last, like when I played the final two games of the season, all three times it's been a snow game. At least one of the two games has been a snow game. We get it, Madden. It's the winter. Oh, our defense got the touchdown. All right. Oh, Eli Manning with your turnovers. They're doing a good job shutting down our wide receivers. I have not seen... Get that in. Ah, oh, fuck's sakes. How to force feed T.O. Oh, it's third inches. Let's go see four special to Shady. Get him own space. That's another thing with the shady thing, where I kind of talked at the at the top of the video about you know his contract and stuff like that. He also was a very like for as many he made a lot more good plays than bad plays, but his bad plays were incredibly frustrating, where he just refused to run north south, like just dancing in the backfield lot. Like he's the kind of guy like he could very well have two straight drives of like four attempts for negative. Like I remember there was a time. Where I think he went a whole half. He had like six rushing attempts. Had like negative 12 yards. Because he just would refuse to take the designed run block lanes. And just try to make his own. Try to make shit go on his own. And it was so annoying. But then you gotta remember the six bringing the snow. That snow game he had against the Detroit Lions. A lot of good memories. More good memories than bad. With LaShawn McCoy. But I actually wonder where that's gonna stack up. Where is Shady going to stand? Like, I think he has a bunch of the major records, but for me, he doesn't seem like a guy that when you talk about the greatest of all-time running backs in the history of the Philadelphia Eagles, it seems like 
Me, me particularly, I'll go Brian Westbrook over Sean McCoy every time. I'm not saying Brian Westbrook was, you know, clearly more talented. I think they were both very similar. I think Brian Westbrook was more of a team player. I think he was, he had better hands, definitely a better receiving receiving back, even though they both were uh, pretty good in that department. Lady uh, Shady obviously had the elusiveness, open field runner. Oh, there we go. There's the play. T.O., baby. Tom McNabb. Somebody call his mama. Get him some Campbell's Chunky Soup. He's working. All right. Oh, they're going to bring safety blitz. That could be bad for you. Oh, shit. I had T.O. if we had just, I know, even one more second, half a second, we would have got T.O. for another touchdown. Guess we'll kick the field goal here, though. This field goal should put this game out of reach. Boom. Oh, a nice block. Nat. 27-10. That's a 17-point ball game. 5-21 to go. I don't think the Giants have it in them to amount this kind of comeback. So we can just sim out the rest of this game here. Have some respect. Oh, yeah. There we go. 41 to 17 body bag. The pedophile there. Fucking Ben McAdoo. Can't believe his eyes. What he's seeing. Can't believe it. Get your funky looking play sheet. Yeah. Like, just shave your mustache and your head. It's like a bowl cut and a mustache. It's fucking 2017, bro. You don't have to go. You, don't, you can go, you know, fresh. You can go for the hip young look. Get that fade going. Get a fade and a guapo beard. You look like a hit, dress like a fucking hipster. Unless he has like a cleft lip or something like that. Maybe he's trying to hide it with a mustache. Then I guess it's acceptable. But we're thirteen and two. Hopefully, what was that? Oh four year, we went fourteen and two. So maybe we can replicate that here, especially last week against the Dallas Cowboys. Regardless, if we were you know thirteen or two or two and thirteen, you yeah, always want to give a maximum effort here against the Dallas Cowgirls, which is what we're gonna do. Because I haven't checked the standings, so a first round buy may not be a guarantee. But let's see if we can get some throwback unis here. It's a throwback away. Definitely not those. 19. Yeah, let's, let's, let's bring up the Kelly Green. I better see those jerseys next year. They have the Kelly Green jerseys, jerseys for like. What year was that? 2010? They brought them back? So I remember like everyone had like a fucking Michael Vick version of that jersey. I actually have a shady version of that jersey. Uh, bought it from China, though, and it looks like shit. So maybe that's my fault for not buying an authentic one. Speaking of authentic jerseys, I did post a picture of my Carson Wentz jersey, but it was one size too big, so I had to ship it back, and it's been fucking forever. It's supposed to be here today, and uh, still not here. So I don't have my Carson Wentz jersey in possession. But that being said, I am looking at getting another jersey. I tweeted... Uh, Roddy McCloud... I actually put a tweet up like... Um, I just made a tweet, like, what filled off the Eagles jersey should I get? And I said, maybe I should get Rodney McLeod. And then Rodney McLeod, like, liked my tweet, so I might have to do it just off that principle. But it's either going to be McLeod or Jordan Hicks. I don't know. Because Rodney McLeod kind of started to slow down at the end of the year, where Jordan Hicks is always consistently good. But, um, oh, that's another thing. For Eagle fans out there, what is your worst jersey that you have? Like, everyone out there has that impulse jersey of, like, why the fuck did I buy this jersey? For me, it's probably my Nick Foles jersey. I bought. I think I bought. I think I ordered it immediately after that Oakland Raiders game where he threw seven touchdowns. Um, well, what else do I have? I have Nick Foles. I got. Uh, I got Kiko Alonso. That's another one that's pretty bad. I got Kiko Alonso uh, covering up a hole in the wall. I think right now. <laughs> uh, I got uh, Mike Vick jersey. That's probably my favorite jersey that I've had for an Eagles fan, even though it's probably not the most popular thing to say. Actually, that's a lie. I have my Brian Dawkins jersey that I've worn to the two Eagles games that I've attended live that they both lost, so maybe that's a cursed jersey. I may should take a different approach. Um, but I think I wore my Vic jersey the most out of all of them. Oh, shit. That guy's actually a dude I like on the Cowboys. I think he has the tools. I don't I don't know if he's a full-time starter right now, David Irving, but I mean, he's fucking built like Julius Peppers. He's a guy that if he hits free agency, 
you know, you guys got Seth Thornton from us. We will take David Irving if he somehow hits free agency. But I, I think that's unlikely because uh, Greg Hardy's probably the dumbest player. Oh, fuck! Greg Hardy's probably the dumbest player in the NFL, so I don't think they're going to take that experiment uh, any further after his contract runs out. Oh, third and inches. Eh, let's see if we can get a lead dive here. Big old Leonard Weaver, come on, make a play, bruh. There we go. Oh, nice little game from Shady. Three rushes, 22 yards here in the first quarter. This is just a great trip down memory lane. And I remember one motherfucker called me out. They said, I subscribed to this channel. This is kind of just random Eagles talk here. You know? I subscribed to this channel for Eagles content. Where's the Eagles content? There's one Eagles video a week, guarantee, amongst all the other content. So give me a goddamn break. I don't want to, I'm a mad channel that likes the Eagles, supports the Eagles. Not, I'm not going to have fucking four Eagles videos a week and piss off all the people that are just here to watch everything else. I'm, I'm self-aware that with the growth of my ch I'm not a fucking 3,000 subscriber channel that all those people are just Eagles fans, you know? I'm self-aware. I'm staying true to my roots. There's always going to be lots of Eagles content. But you gotta, you gotta evolve a little bit here in this YouTube game. I already have you know enough stacked against me that I just despise and outright won't play Ultimate Team. If I played Ultimate Team right, if I was playing Ultimate Team like during my growth period, I'd probably be at like fifty thousand subs by now. Which makes playing Ultimate Team in Madden eighteen a little tempting, but I, I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna be able to bring myself to do that shit. But I don't know yet. Maybe I'll sell my soul to the devil and do some of that content. If I could tell, if someone. I, I still think there's an answer out there. I still think someone out there will have the perfect suggestion, a way that I can enjoy Ultimate Team without, like, the thing is, I have to find a way that I can enjoy Ultimate Team without feel like I'm wasting money, but it can't be the whole no money spent because then the game becomes boring. With no money spent, you pretty much, like, that's what I try to do this year. And the whole time, I just fucking spent all my coins that I was winning from the challenges, the solo challenges, on contracts. It just became, like, Never-ending cycle of gotta get contracts. We have Brent Silk for the nice touchdown go up three. Um, so you kind of have to spend money, and it's also like it's fun. It's not fun to spend money, but it's fun to open packs. That's like the whole point of the game. When you do the whole no money thing, it's incredibly tough to to balance, you know, spend, you sit, earning your money, grinding for your money, and spending it on contracts, and then being able to buy packs. It's really really tough. Um, so again, open to suggestions. I, I would totally like to play Ultimate Team and bring a fresh new... Like, I think there's a niche for that. I think there is plenty of people out there. It's definitely not the majority, but there's plenty of people out there that hate Ultimate Team because of, like, the same videos. Oh, guys, I spent, like, 60 real bucks here to open packs. Like, everyone does that. Everyone the dog does that. Everyone titles, oh, 700k fucking pack open. I'm gonna pull some elites. Got some sick pulls. Unbelievable. Insane. You guys aren't gonna believe what you are watching. Stuff like that. There's, there's, a, there's a room for someone to be different, but I, I don't know. Like I said, you guys probably know a little bit more about that. You're a little bit more in tuned with the community, but I am open for suggestions. Oh, my God. Defensive line here in Dallas is doing a good job, even though I think that was a safety blitz. Uh, let's give it to Shady. Zone run here. Oh. Oh, he stays on his feet. It was nice to see Shady well, though. I don't hate Shady. That's that's one thing I want to make clear. Even though it sounds like I'm a little salty about him leaving. Like, he had a great year with Buffalo. And, like, I, I drafted him on most of my fantasy teams. I think he's a really good player. He's very exciting to watch. And I hope he does well. It seems like all his negative comments were about more so Chip Kelly and not... Oh, there we go. Kevin... Oh, come on. Come on, White Lightning. Make that play. Uh, it seems like Shady's comments when he left the Philadelphia Eagles that were, you know, negative comments were more directed towards Chip Kelly. We all know, you know, you can't be sipping the fucking, the Chip Kelly, uh, the punch, the fruit punch there. It's spiked. You can't, you can't just 100% bite, eat what he's selling, you know, take what he says as gospel because so much has come to light. Oh, there we go. White Lightning, baby. You can't cover. That's too much speed. White Lightning, I think he's 97 speed. You get a Sean Jackson, 99. It's only a matter of time until they get open. Big time. That was an underrated connection. Don't have a nab to Kevin Curtis. But speaking of jerseys, there is one jersey. For the longest time, it took me a while. The last jersey I actually added to my collection, and it took me this long, was Brian Westbrook. Um, 
the the current jersey that I want right now. Oh, hey, that was a good play. I want a Jeff Garcia jersey. A Jeff Garcia Philadelphia Eagles jersey is probably. I tried to get a Tebow one from China just because I wasn't going to pay full price for a Tebow jersey. That's certainly on the list, like getting a Tebow jersey. But in terms of like, I would pay, it'd probably cost a couple bucks to get a Jeff Garcia jersey because you, you wouldn't be able to get like a knockoff replica. You have to buy an authentic one. I would get, if someone can fucking find a realistic Jeff Garcia, like a real, not realistic, a realistic rebuild, a realistic Jeff Garcia um, authentic jersey, I think I'd probably, I'd probably dabble. I might even get a T.O. Like just, I'm, I'm going to start looking at that for my jerseys here because I'm sick and tired of buying jerseys of real players and then have them get traded. I got burnt with Kiko. I got burnt with Foles. I got burnt with Shady. I got burnt with Deshaun. Um, like I fucking, if I want to play it safe, I just get Fletcher Cox because he's signed for six more years, for five more years. So, Shady, untouched. Let's go. So I think that would be on the list of jerseys that I want to get for old school guys. Like if I wanted to go offensive lineman, I wouldn't mind... I mean, I don't think you like, who the fuck wants to buy an old lineman jersey? But there's a couple I would get. I mean, Danny Watkins is a Canadian, but I just wouldn't get that out of principle. But I think uh, Jason Peters wouldn't be a bad call. Evan Mathis wouldn't be a bad call. John Runyon wouldn't be a bad call. I actually was pretty close a couple years ago pulling a trigger on a John Runyon jersey. I saw it on eBay for like 40 bucks. Um, I think uh, T.O. jersey wouldn't be bad. Oh, that was a little late. Should have ran it. T.O. jersey wouldn't be bad. Kevin Curtis would be uh, pretty... Hipster, a pretty hipster buy. I remember when I was in high school, when I was a, I don't know, we, we call freshmen here in Canada, like our high school is a little bit different here in Canada, I think high school in America, like some of them, oh shit, oh shit, uh, some of them are, like, some of your guys' high schools are like go grade 8, grade 9, 10, 11, 12, they're, they're big ones, and I think the most common is 9, 10, 11, 12. Here in Canada though, we only have 10, 11, and 12. I remember when I was in grade 10, a grade 12 guy, a big old motherfucking black guy, had a David Akers jersey, I was like, what the fuck? The most random jersey I've ever seen. But shout out to him. Like, I don't want to sound racist, but like a gigantic black guy has like pretty much the only white player on the Eagles at that time. David, like the kicker. I don't know. Unless he like got that at like Value Village or something. I've seen, and I've seen an Eagles jersey at Value Village. Unfortunately, it was the same jersey I had. I had a Donovan McNabb jersey. A uh, black one. But yeah, maybe give some suggestions. I'm just giving guys answer a whole lot of questions like I'm doing a live stream. Uh, what are some good shout-outs here for older Eagle jerseys? Like, not necessarily guys that played in the 80s and shit. Just guys, like, that's from the era. The Madden era. Relating it to the video. That could be pretty good to get. Um, Sonny Samuel would be a trot. Oh, that'd be a good one, actually. Jeremiah Trotter uh, would be a solid jersey option, I think. Get the old Axeman. The Axeman cometh. But I got the Wentz one. The Wentz one's in the mail. Uh, depending on who we draft, I might get a fucking Corey Davis if we draft the right guy. Jalen Tabor. Should I buy a Joe Mixon jersey just to be controversial, be edgy? Yeah. Get on drama alert. All right, we'll just sim the rest of this game here. 34 to 7 body bag as we go to 14 2, matching the 20, uh, 2004 season of the Philadelphia Eagles. So what we're going to do, we definitely have the first round buy on lock. So we're going to simulate there to the divisional round. Take a quick look at the regular season stats. I think I saw at one point in that game, T.O. only like, got his 45th reception of the year, which is kind of surprising for our 99 overall wide receiver. Uh, which leads me to believe that this was a predominantly running team. Unless, you know, Don McNabb and T.O. were beefing. But let's go here. We got to the wild card. That actually kind of looks like Don McNabb to that little fucking... You know, generic face that we have there. So that's kind of cool. I actually feel, I'm feeling this. I might actually go back to back and record the newest episode. Uh, if you guys don't follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitter. Because I straight up just went on Twitter and asked what team you want to see me do next for this. And the Green Bay Packers was the one that I chose. So follow me on Twitter if you don't already do uh, to stay up to date. I look for, like I said, I try to engage my subs while I'm playing that. So Don McNabb on this year. 3,200 passing yards, 38 touchdowns, 4 picks, so great season. That's actually somewhat similar to his best year. I think uh, 32 touchdowns and 6 picks or something like that uh, was Don McNabb's best statistical uh, passing career. No Philadelphia Eagle has ever thrown for 4,000 passing yards, so hopefully Carson Wentz uh, can break that streak. I think actually Sam Bradford right now currently holds the most passing yards in the season, which kind of sucks. 
Uh, run the ball. Oh my God. We Did we ever run the ball? 2,300. Sean McCoy broke the rushing record. 2,300 rushing yards, 21 touchdowns. Brian Westbrook, 13, 1,400 rushing yards almost and 23 touchdowns. So we got uh, 30, almost 3,700 yards rushing on the ground and 44 rushing touchdowns. That's that's crazy. That's the most crazy backfield that I've ever seen at any point in any video we've done in um, this Madden 17 season. Running the ball. Oh, my God. Okay, Deshaun Jackson, 64 receptions, 700 yards, 6 touchdowns. T.O., 630 yards, 8 touchdowns. Zach Ertz, 486 and 2. White Lightning, Kevin Curtis, 550 and 11. Uh, Westbrook, 255 and 4. McCoy, 330 and 3. So, that's like 4,000 total yards from our two running backs and over 50 touchdowns. That's nuts. Uh, the defense side of the ball, Axeman led, led the team with 124 tackles. The Takeo spikes with 114. The sacks front, we got 20 sacks from Brandon Graham, 16 from Trent Cole, 13 and a half from Corey Simon. And on the interception front, five picks from Weapon X, three from Jenkins, three from Samuel, two from Spikes, Trotter, and Lito Shepard, and Vincent and Ron Brooks both had ones. Let's see, let's see, let's confirm that Shady won MVP there. Of course he's going to win MVP. He's absolutely insane. Uh, Westbrook came, we had two guys that made the short list. Uh, for the MVP, we can see Jeff Garcia there from the Browns, uh, Juiced Up, Baltimore Raven, Joe Flacco, Jamal Lewis. Uh, seeing a lot of the legends from the few rosters that we have done. But let's jump right in here to the divisional round game. Let's get the Eagles a Super Bowl here. Let's not choke like the Dallas Cowboys. Let's get this win. Let's start off hot against the Minnesota Vikings, who are, you know, not a pushover. Not going to be the easiest defense that we're going to go against. But I think our offense um, could do it. But more so, I think with the Super Sim, we're how much better our defense is than our offense. If we stop AP, we should be able to get a couple scores. My girlfriend, I'm starting to feel better. Awesome. But yeah, I'm feeling all right. I might just record the Packers video right away after this. Right next, just get that content up. I haven't even started the Season 2 rebuild yet as, as I'm recording this, which is kind of uh, procrastinating of me. as is, It is scheduled to go up shortly. I'm just feeling this right now. I might take a break from the rebuilds for a week just to recharge the old batteries. But I already have you know the game plan for Episode 1 of Season 2 of the rebuild, so I might just do that because I have it. The, work, the hard work is done. The leg work is already completed. All right, so picking up here, 13-3. And, of course... You know, we had the, the greatest running back tandem in the history of the NFL, so why not start it with a fucking pass in a snow game? Yeah, of course, let's pick, open up with an interception. Harris and Smith. Sick. Great start. Classic Don McNabb. Start playing like shit in the playoffs. Third and five. I guess we have to throw it, but... Maybe we won't let the... Let's just go to the running backs. Old 36, Brian Westbrook. That is one of the key jerseys I think most people should have. I think if you're an Eagles fan, you should have, I'd say, three jerseys guaranteed in your lineup. You need a Brian Dawkins. You need a Brian Westbrook. And you need a Reggie White. Those are the three jerseys you need to have, a must-have for an Eagles fan. And then I think four jerseys, like, you know, I'm personally a little bit in the middle on jerseys. I think some, I think jerseys are acceptable at times, unacceptable at others. Like, you don't want to wear a jersey all the time uh, to sporting events. Have a little class. Buy some league affi or team affiliated gear that's not. Oh, shit. Deshaun Jackson taking off three fucking guys here. All 190 pounds of them. I think some people overdo it with the jerseys. That's what I can say. Some guys are like, here's my entire closet of jerseys. I think that's kind of weird. But then again, I have a fuck ton of jerseys myself. Um, but I think that there's four jerseys you should have. You should usually have, well, actually five jerseys. I think you should have a guy on offense, a guy on defense, and then the other three, Reggie White, Brian Dawkins, and um, Brian Westbrook. And then all those jerseys, you want to make sure you have one of every color. That's the way I think. That's my official code as an Eagle fan. If I was making an Eagle fan handbook, if you had the you know disposable income to afford all that, that's what I'd have. 
And I think if you're an Eagle fan, you, you have to go to the link at least once. I know a lot. Some of you guys are young and you can't afford to go to a game. You might live far away. Don't let anything say no. I was I, I was fucking broke as shit. And instead of buying uh, fucking textbooks for college, I went to an Eagles game and watched the Eagles lose to the Dallas Cowboys. Best decision of my life, even though the game was horrible. Fucking didn't even use the textbooks anyway. You got honors. So it doesn't matter. Go to an Eagles game. Just once in your life. Make that a plan. Like, And do it before you get kids and before you get old. Like, you have to, I think, for most of you guys, you're probably, if you're not my age or you're younger, before you're 25, go to an Eagles game. Because then, if you don't do it by then, unless you, like, you're going to have a baller job or something crazy like that, you probably, it's going to be really tough as life gets hectic. Um, obviously, with YouTube, my YouTube money that I make now, which is decent enough, uh, I could probably pay for a trip once a year. To go see the Eagles. I would consider that a channel expense. Because I'd probably just vlog or something like that. While I'm there. Maybe do a sub meetup. See E-Rock. Meet E-Rock. That guy's kind of cool. Maybe I could get a fucking scheduling. A, a parking lot boxing match. A charity boxing match against EDP. Just light him up. I would murder that guy. Just for making all Eagles fans look like idiots. Not to come off like the. Like I'm sarcastic. When I when I say shit like that. Because I'm like. Oh I'm an internet tough guy. Keyboard warrior. I'm telling you, I would absolutely fuck EDP up. Oh my god, too. It'd be like that. EDP would be jo uh, fucking Terrence Newman. That'd be T.O. Maybe he's a cool guy, but you you know you can only go off the kind of content that he puts out. Uh, and he looks like a fucking. <clears throat> I'm not gonna call him. It's an F word. And it's not fuck. He just ah uh, looks like the worst. Big field goal, huh? 68 yards? Oh. All right, let's test this best field goal. I said, actually, I wanted to try to hit a 70 yarder one time. All right, Gus, now come on. This would be so good. Nah, we fucked that up. Oh. Oh. Damn it. I didn't have max power on that. I think if I had max... I don't even know if I had max power, that would have went in, but... We might get another... Uh, if we can get another chance here in the third quarter to kick a field goal, I might have to take it. Oh, we won't. Shit. Because I think I got 99 kick. Like, Aker, you're not going to have a better kicker. He's 99 overall kicker. There we go. Hit T.O. across the middle. Get that lead. We need our defense to come up big. This game is a little too close for comfort. Third receiving touchdown in the game for T.O. He's going off. And they all oh, look. The Vikings turn the ball over. Sam Bradford... At the link, just just shivering in fear of the fans and the harassment that he's probably getting right now. Oh, all right. Well, that, was, that went down as a rushing attempt. Let's chew this clock. Get it down here. Doesn't look like this video's going to be going over a fucking hour again. God, I don't know how to make this under an hour. Especially, well, the Eagles want to kind of go off on tangents and shit. There we go. Moving the change for T.O. We can probably hit him with a back-to-back C4 specials. Let's see what that 2,300-yard LaShawn McCoy is saying right now. A strong test. Oh, good block, Leonard Weaver. On this game's over now. Snow game. I don't care about the bad weather. I'm Fiddy Tyson because that's where I'm from. Oh, yeah. There we go. 49-25 victory over the Minnesota Vikings. Massive day from T.O. MVP for sure. With uh, probably 130 yards, three receiving touchdowns. Has he been in uh, Ultimate Team? I, I still kind of keep up with Ultimate Team because I just follow them on Twitter. Has there ever been a T.O. card? If I ever won a golden ticket? See, I know a little bit of the Ultimate Team. If I won a golden ticket, that's probably what I'd make for the Philadelphia Eagles. Because there's always just a crazy Brian Westbrook card anyway. So I think if they just had a T.O. for the Cowboys or something, because I'd probably bring him in for the Cowboys or maybe the uh, the 49ers, that would be my pick. Get T.O., put him on the fucking Eagles. Get it. All right, we're taking on the 11-5 Green Bay Packers in the NFC Conference Championship. Got a work cut out for us. Packers are a strong team. Aaron Rodgers, A.A. Ron, it's just more, well, maybe they're not a strong team in comparison to us, but the Vikings were a worse team than the Packers, and they didn't have an Aaron Rodgers on offense. And our defense struggled. 
So I don't know if you can throw that one up to the weather. Hopefully this game, we got some clear skies. And a very chilly night here at Lincoln Financial Field. But yeah, speaking of the Eagles, man, where I said you have to go to an Eagles game. Awesome city. Philadelphia is one of the best. Montreal and Philadelphia are the two best cities I've gone. I've been I've been a lot of places. I've been in Europe. I've been pretty much everywhere in Canada. I haven't been to Vancouver. And I heard Vancouver's pretty dope in Canada, but that's so far away. I don't think I'm ever going to do that flight. Just because of that flight. I'm not a big fan of flying. Uh, then again, I have done like an eight-hour flight to, to London, which I just hate that shit. My ears pop. I'm not afraid of flying. I just hate flying. It's so annoying. There's always a fucking kid on the plane. But Philly, I, I fucking love Philly. People are insanely nice. It's really the city of brotherly love. Uh, then again, I was, you know, so many people would stop and talk to me. Like, where are you guys? Like, it's always me and my girlfriend that go. I'm like, oh, where are you guys from? Oh, from Canada. And they're like, oh, where's that? I'm not going to say the most smart people, but lovely city. Everyone was always incredibly nice. And, uh, you know, once you really master SEPTA, the fucking train system to get there, you're fucking golden. Takes you everywhere. Takes you right to Lincoln Financial Field where there's like that big, as the, the hockey rink, I've gone to two, uh, I went to a Flyers game, I think. And I think that was the obligatory Canadian thing because uh, they were playing the the Penguins and Sidney Crosby may or may not have been essentially my neighbor at any point for any hockey fans out there. Uh, so we went to that. But it's always super fun. I'll tell you what's a shithole though. New Jersey. We went uh, last, uh, when we go, when did I go to my Eagles game? Last year, I think it was. No, not last year. In 2015, I went to the Eagles and Dolphins with my buddies. And we went, we decided one night to take the, the train from Philly to New Jersey and catch the Devils play a hockey game. I thought New Jersey wasn't going to be that bad. I mean, obviously, we didn't see the best in New Jersey. We just pretty much saw, like, this industrial park. We didn't go to the shore or anything like that. But it just smelt, like, bad. It just smelt significant, like, distinctly not as pleasant. It's just everything about it. Uh, we went to a bar that was right outside, uh, whatever the name of the arena is, and that was a shithole. The people were, people were kind of fun. Uh, funny story though, when we were there, as we're getting off on a tangent here, when I should be talking about the fucking gameplay. When I was in uh, New Jersey, uh, one of my buddies went to the bathroom. It was a crowded bathroom. There's like two guys already in the stalls rocking dumps. My buddy was fighting with his girlfriend, and like one of the dudes, never met him in my life, just from the stall was like commentating my buddy getting in a fight with his girlfriend. Like, and I saw it funny, he'd be like, ooh. Oh, you're sleeping on the couch. Oh, it was fucking hilarious. I almost pissed myself. Um, well, what other stories can I have? Because we're doing a little bit of story time. Uh, I almost got in a fight uh, at a nightclub in Philly because some guy wearing a Cowboys hat was like, man, you look like a bitch wearing that. And then I just knew like, oh my God, how'd you do that? He was actually a pretty big guy. I'm a big guy myself. Um... I think I would have. I would never get in a fight over something stupid like that. But my biggest worry at that time was my girlfriend was worried uh, that my friends were trying to calm me down because I kind of walked away because I have an aggressive temperament. But my biggest worry is like I, I'm a fucking Canadian guy. I can't get thrown in American prison. I mean, I'd miss the Eagles game. That's another pick. Oh shit! I'm not missing my Eagles game just to fuck up this stupid Dallas Cowboy fan. It would have been probably even much fat. Yeah, he definitely has the reach on. He would have had the reach on me. But uh, I probably just would have fucking body slammed him. But that is my tough guy story from when I was in Philadelphia. Everything else from Philadelphia, everyone was super awesome. Uh, best experience was when I, uh, where the fuck did we go? We went to like the Philly Mall. The mall it's in Center City. And uh, we went to Chick-fil-A, which you don't have in Canada. And like, the fucking guy like hooked me up so hard because I was wearing a LaShawn McCoy shirt. Fucking love Philly. We can talk about Philly right now. It's fucking February. I want to go next year. I don't know if next year is going to be in the cards uh, for the upcoming 2017 season. It might be. Depending on if we grow a little bit here in YouTube, I may have a couple expendable bucks that I can do something with Philly. And, of course, like I said, I do a video for it. But I'm going to say, like, because I think they play the Niners uh, this year. And one of my buddies is a diehard Niner fan, like one of my best friends. Uh, so we're thinking about maybe making a trip out of that. But um, I'm going to say for sure. Uh, in the next two years, I'll be going to Philly again. I'll do a video or something like that for you guys. If you guys are in Philly, and you're not underage, so I wouldn't look like I'm a fucking pedophile traveling from Canada, meeting up with people. Um, I'd chill with subs. Probably in two years' time, hopefully I'm at like fucking 50,000 subscribers. And uh, maybe there'll be a couple people in Philly like, Hey, I want to hang out with Kadron. That that boy Kadron. Oh, fit that. Oh, come on, T.O. You got to make that play. 
But we're in field goal range. Should be able to kick the field goal here. Boom. Oh, 13 mile an hour winds. Might be able to attempt our 70 yarder at some point during this video. Uh, and we'll just go for the run here. Oof. Right. Oh, they calling me with that juke. Broke his ankles. What else do I get from that? Oh, I yelled at Nelson Aguilar when I was leaving. I, I like the, the biggest thing is like, oh, have you seen any Eagles uh, when I was in Philly? Unfortunately, when we were driving in from the airport, last time we arrived, we saw Connor Barwin on the freeway. And I, well, obviously I wasn't going to do anything. But when we were leaving in the in the taxi to go to the airport, I saw Nelson Aguilar uh, walking just outside of downtown. And I kind of yelled at him. Which I feel good about. This is before like he was de deemed to be you know, shit. He was at the point where like, oh, he's off to a slow start in his rookie year. So I wasn't like, ob I wasn't you know objectively yelling at him, but it was a little bit hot in the window. Was down. I was like, Aguilar, and he fucking gave me a little wave. Uh, so I mean, usually if he was a good player, that'd be like one of my stories I can tell my kids. See that eagle guy? I actually yelled at him, and he acknowledged me. The fact that it's Nelson Aguilar, uh, we'll, we'll just we'll just forget about that. We'll move on. All right, we'll scramble with Donnie here. 31 rushing attempts, or 31 yards on four rushing attempts for Donnie McNabb. Uh, maybe do a flank a drive. Then again, I'm pretty sure. Look at that, the Browns just body bagging. No, that's we're going to go up against another man in classic Rasta. And the Browns. Oh, who's that, Selleck? Yeah, bring that in, bruh. Good, good defense, though, from Ryan. Is it Jake Ryan? John Ryan? One of those? No, it's Jake Ryan. John Ryan's the punter. The Canadian. All right. Oh, hey, late hit. That's a late hit. Where's the flag? Where's the Tom Brady flag on that one? If that was Tom Brady. That'd be a fucking 30-yard pally automatic four touchdowns ejection. They like racist to Donovan McNabb. That's another thing. I think Don, people are trying to say, like, will Don McNabb make the Hall of Fame? I think he might because he's, you know, you bring race into things. He's, is there a more successful black quarterback than Don McNabb? Like, I think his stats are better than Steve McNair's from, like, this generation. I think he might have a shot. Like, people are, so many people are talking about, like, well, don't, will Michael Vick make the Hall of Fame? I think Don McNabb will make the Hall of Fame for Michael Vick. Like, Don McNabb was the second best running quarterback. If, like, Don McNabb was in the NFL right now. Uh, he'd be the number one overall fancy pick almost every year. For those of you that don't know. There we go. We'll just we won't take the unnecessary hit. Alright, this is... Uh, we might be able to sim with the rest of this game here. Yep. Alright. Let's finish it up. Where are we taking on? The Cleveland Browns in the Super Bowl as we move past the Green Bay Packers, 38 to 17. Very surprising that the Minnesota Vikings gave us a much challenge, much challenge, much more challenge than the Green Bay Packers. But now we're going up against the Cleveland Browns, who are juiced with their Madden greats. So they got Jeff Garcia, Peyton Hillis, Braylon Edwards, a fucking 99 overall, Kellen Winslow, great offensive line. Uh, defensively, I think we should be able to exploit them a little bit, but it's going to be an even matchup, I think, for sure. Let's sim here to the Super Bowl. What a weird... This would be a dream Super Bowl scenario. Somehow the the Browns make it, so we just know that they're not going to win. Like, that's probably the only Super Bowl that the Eagles are going to, like, guarantee win. Like, there's, there's one team that may be considered more unlucky than the Philadelphia Eagles in the NFL. Uh, the Browns are certainly contention for that. Let's bring it up. Well, that even overall, 96... 96, Super Bowl, Lee, taking place from the Tokyo Dome in Tokyo, Japan. I think Lee's more of a Chinese name. So taking place in Hong Kong, China, Super Bowl, Lee, brought to you by Bruce Lee, Jet Lee, uh, Michael J. White, Ving Rames. You know, all these guys are presenting Super Bowl, Lee.
You know who's gonna have a big game here? I think Brent Selleck. I think it's gonna be a miss. I think the linebackers for the Browns are gonna be a big time area we can exploit. So, well, Zach Ertz is the starter, I think. So, Zach Ertz, the tight end, will have a big game, I think, if I had to guess. So, I think we are one and one. We lost. We didn't win the Super Bowl with the Browns. We are one and done, actually, with the Browns. I remember we lost in overtime to the Buffalo Bills in a horseshit game. Then we won the Super Bowl with the Ravens. So, let's see if we can make this back-to-back -back Super Bowls here. Because uh, as the roster gets built, it's going to be increasing. Oh, come on! Why was wide open? I think it's going to be increasingly difficult to win the Super Bowls because I mean, more, more of the teams are going to be stacked. So we got to get them right, right now when we can and accumulate. I mean, for the first 10 episodes, I'm expecting at least 7 Super Bowls. Oh my God, this is horrible. Horrific start from the Philadelphia Eagles here. Are you putting... I'm going T.O. even if I'll throw the pick. I'm going to bite on that all day long. How do you keep... Oh, that was good coverage. Who's that? Baxter? Gary Baxter? I'll take that every day. You fucking no safety help over the top. Man-on-man -man coverage on T.O. I'm going to go that. I'm going to attack that every damn time. But apparently they did their studying. They, they know that we're a run-first team. Oh, sh... No! Oh! 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 Almost a great catch from Deshaun Jackson. That was a horrible pass. This ain't fucking mad no four. You can't do that shit with success. Like, well, Vic Play just run the complete opposite direction. Throw it across your body. Goddamn, like, laser beam. Oh, what's this now? That was, looked like that was holding from one of the tight ends or the running back. Holding. Offense. We got it. Oh, it's John Runyon. Governor John Runyon. I think he's a governor. Congressman. He's a congressman. Oh my god, bring the ball down, man. Two straight stuff we had in our hands and there's uh, some Eagles. Well, the, the current gen Philadelphia Eagles are, are kind of showing up here. We need to get even some yards to get some points. Maybe we can try D-Jacks deep, maybe. Lead him. There we go. J Matt, J Matt, J Matt. 30 yard bomb. Setting up nicely on the 15 yard line. Let's run the ball here a little bit. Controlling the clock. They're, they haven't touched the ball yet, I don't think. Unless they started the game with the ball, which is completely valid. My, sh my short term memory right now is not phenomenal. <sighs> okay. Third and eight. Here we go. PA Power O. Gets Zach Ertz here in the back of the end zone. Oh yeah, that looks that's exactly what we want. Oh, maybe not. Oh, we just go there. TO wide open. Let's get it. What was his number? Was he 80, I think he was 81 or was he 87? Was he either 81 or 87 when he played with the Eagles? I probably could have done a better job getting this number. I tried my best. People like to shit on me like, that's not his number. I gave McNabb the right number. I gave Dawkins the right number. I gave Westbrook the right number. Usually that stuff's just really tedious and takes uh, too much time for me to do. I couldn't remember T.O.'s number, and I didn't really bother looking it up. I can't remember. I want to say he was 87, but he might have been 81. I know Deshaun Jackson was 10. I gave him that number. That's Deshaun Jackson. Fuck! G. Jackson was wide open. He beat it. Well, not wide open, but he beat his man. But we should be able to kick the field goal here. 56 yarder. Let's win our wheelhouse. Boom. Right down the middle. Count it. Four point lead. Hopefully we can keep them off the score sheet here for the remainder of the first half. Oh shit. Alright, kind of fucked that up, but nice. Got us on the four yard line. First and goal. Let's audible this to a run. Just that I'm not feeling the passing game right now. Let's get to the outside. And yeah. Shady baby. What a backfield pit would have had with Deion Lewis looking pretty solid at the Patriots. They had Shady and Deion Lewis at one point. Red zone again on the three yard line, huh? First and goal. What's the over under in the comment section? Someone's going to say, Is that Ricky from the trailer park, boys? 
That's crazy that Ricky from the trailer park boys plays Madden. One of these days, I'm going to get Ricky to come in one of my videos. I'll get Rob Wells, the actor that plays Ricky. We have the same doctor. We have the same family doctor. Maybe I can get him to come in one of my videos. Him, Julian, and Bubbles. I don't know... I'll have ties to that. My aunt went to school with Bubbles when they were kids. Ricky has the same family doctor as me. And my girlfriend's best friend babysits Julian's kids. So I have connections. I, I can definitely get in touch with these people. Have them in the contacts. Well, that's neither here nor there. We need, to, we need to focus on getting this Super Bowl title. The Browns are making this a game. 24-21, only a three-point lead. That's Oh, I like that. I like, I like Zach Ertz on this. Cut this off. We'll take it ourselves. Oh, back-to-back -to -back running touchdowns for Donovan McNabb, I think. I think that was back. Yeah, there we go. Boom, oh, baby. Now I'm having a highlight reel of a game here. The Browns are... Look, luckily the computer is keeps putting us in the red zone, but the Browns are making this game close. Can't have a turnover here. Can't have a turnover here. Looks to fucking pass the ball. And he fit... Oh, that was bad. Okay, I'm just going to run it. That was a bad decision. That could have very well been an interception. Trusting T.O. a little bit much there. Oh, I forgot to put on shoot the clock, too. Damn it. And we don't need to shoot the clock. Oh, there's holding. God damn it. God damn it, god damn it. <laughs> what, what, what the fuck kind of taunt is that? Whatever I wanted. Give me a second and long, I'll burn some clock. Evan Mathis. What a follow on Twitter. Tell you, I'll make that recommendation. I made it a couple times here. Evan Mathis is well worth the follow on Twitter. Alright. Switch this. See what Leonard Weaver can do for us. Oh! Boom! Let's go. Man, oh, is that like a signature? What the fuck is that? Is that a signature touchdown dance? I assume so if he's done it back to back times. Ooh, this is uh this is quite the game there. This would be a, this would be an all time classic. Who's in real life? Oh, you stay in bounds, you motherfucker. Here we go. Now it's time to burn the clock. Everybody clap your hands. Alright, two minute warning. Inside zone split. Shady's always been more of a zone runner than anything. Oh my god, the fucking penalties! Jesus Christ, do your job. That's what, four penalties this game that have cost us either a first down or a touchdown? Holding. Offense. Sean Andrews. Oh, yeah, he grabby. Sean Andrews is pretty grabby. Second and 11. Let's just go with a mesh. We'll go something short over the middle and see if we can get some uh, yak here. Oh, all right. We'll just eat the sack. Either or. Let's fuck. We got to go four verticals here. I guess we'll go bench. Well, we got a 91 overall punter. So we should. Well, they'd add, they got Josh Cribbs, though. They might be able to make a play from that. Boop, oh, T.O. Oh. oh, go, go, go. There you go. T.O. is elite. Good night. This is, that's it. That's got to be a game there, right? Surely. Nothing's going to happen. Did you just call me Shirley? Great play, T.O. Elite. Get in the Hall of Fame. Get that guy in the Hall of Fame. There we go. 45 to 31. Your Philadelphia Eagles win the Super Bowl. Thank you guys for watching another episode of the Madden Greats. I hope you guys did enjoy this. If this is your first time stopping by. Don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, especially if you're an Eagles fan. Trust me, I'm 400 times better than EDP. Ask anyone. It's you. It's clearly obvious. It's the, clearly the best YouTuber for the Eagles on YouTube here, for sure. Uh, 400 likes, like I said, and I will do the next video immediately kind of deal. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section below with what teams you want to see me do next and any comments, questions, or concerns. But thank you for watching, and until next time, it's C4 saying I'm no longer